Okay, I just wanted to record it. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to our Improving Photoshop designs with Adobe Firefly AI. And also, we're going to jump into Firefly and maybe to Adobe Illustrator. My name is Hannah Messer, and I'm an instructor here for the Adobe certification, as well as an Adobe education leader. And I kind of like go around and teach a lot of all Adobe. And I kind of prepared, it's going to be a little bit different because a lot of time when I do a seminar, I'm sending assets to everybody and tell you, follow me. This time I want it to be kind of interactive because I'm going to show you something and then you're going to do something with it because it's all going from, doesn't matter which asset I'm using, it's going to be your asset because it's going to AI and then you can create everything that you have. So what are we going to do today? First of all, it is a little announcement. So we call it Creative for All. Adobe Firefly is really available now for everybody. Until September 13th, it was just on beta and some people could use it and some not. Also, they couldn't use it for commercial usage. Now you can use it now. So it is out of the beta version and you can use it. But I want to talk to you a little bit about it because it, there's going to be different kind of rules as we go. So what do we have now? Adobe Firefly in Photoshop and Illustrator, Adobe Firefly within Adobe Express, and Adobe Firefly, the web application. And then now when I'm going to go back here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the experience. So what is it? Generative AI frees everybody to explore, create, because a lot of people are saying, wow, and I said it too, uh, I don't want to start using somebody else's artwork and everything is going to look the same. For now, I kind of feel like a lot of things look the same, but what is it doing for us as artists, right? What is it doing for us? Is it going to take our job away or is it going to help us? So we're coming from the point of view that it is really going to help us kind of like spruce our creativity, give us some ideas how to search and do new ideas and actually go in and use it as a positive way. So what do we have here? One is Adobe Firefly. What can we do it here? Text to image, generative fill, text effect, generative recolor, sketch to image and 3D to image. So it's really not there yet, but it's going to be there kind of very, very soon. Then we have how to help us in Adobe Photoshop. And you see some examples here, generative fill, generative expand and improved remove tool. And you see here like an image and headshot that was taken. The left one that you have in front of you is the black shirt. And then in generative fill, I said, I wanted uh, a flower shirt and I want something with lace. And then basically I gave an idea. Am I going to use it later for something? Maybe yes, maybe not. But I can also give in a director, say, I want to look at something like this. And then the other stuff that we have is generative color with Adobe uh, Illustrator. I also put here like important links. And then if you want, I can really send it to you. It's everything about Adobe Sensei, everything about a special blog, and then another kind of blog that published about generative and AI. But it's not something that you cannot find it yourself. I'll tell you where I found it. Everything is actually in your Adobe Creative Cloud. So now the question, how much I'm going to pay? Am I going to pay money for it? And I'm going to be extra because like uh, mid-journey, every time you use it, you have to have a subscription and then kind of like pay money. So one thing that you have until November 1st, there's a certain amount of credit if you're in Adobe Creative Cloud I have to see if I have like uh, the area that I have. Let's see if I have still the file for it. But a certain credit that you can get for free being part of Adobe Creative Cloud. If you just have Adobe Photoshop, you get certain credit. If you have um, the entire Creative Suite, you can get a certain credit. What happened if you use the credit? Because me, let's say as an educator, right? I have an Adobe Creative Cloud, but just for me showing you stuff, Am, am I using my credits already and it's going away? 
So the answer is going to be probably November 1st. They're going to tell everybody how much more credit you have to buy. But actually, if you don't want to purchase credit, it, it you can still use it. It's just going to be slower. That's the whole thing. So right now it's going to be faster because it's on the credit that you have. And then if you exhaust your credit, you can still use it, but it is going to be a little slower. I expect that after Adobe Max, which is in two weeks from now, they're going to have different announcements about that. And probably they're going to tell people because maybe some people in big organization will say, you know what, we need more credit. We don't want it to be really slow. We really want to be like really perfect and really fast. So they're going to be able to buy maybe more credit. At the moment, you don't buy more credit. At the moment, you can do everything that you have. Sorry, so, uh, a student just emailed me asking for the Zoom link. What? A student just emailed me asking for the Zoom link. The Zoom link. Yeah, so I can join. <laughs> okay, what do I know with the Zoom you link? you go to Zoom. Okay, hold on a second. How about I am going to pause Zoom the recording. Um. Anyway, so what I'm talking about is basically very soon we are going to have new information. So first of all, I want to ask you a question. How many of you use Firefly already? You use Firefly? Good. How many never heard about it? You two never heard about it. What did you use it for? I did a prompt to generate an image. And then you liked it? Well, no, my prompt is really bad. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. So let's just go in and look at that and see what we're doing. So I'm jumping in to Adobe Firefly over here. So if you never used it, you can do Adobe Firefly. I mean, Adobe Firefly dot Adobe dot com and you go in there, right? A lot of us have the ability to create a file already. But yeah. Uh, you're going to find it in there. Yes. If you go back here to your uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, and all the way here, you have feature stuff. You have Adobe Firefly, and that's where I went from. So that's where I go from, always from there. So I know for sure I'm getting all the information that I have. Of course, if you have public beta, you can go in and ask to be in the public beta, and then you're going to be there. The reason I'm going right away to the Adobe Creative Cloud, because that's secure for me that I'm going directly to the area that I have. So I went in there, and this is, so if you guys want to go there, go to your Creative Cloud and go to the web application, and you have, over there, you do have, um, Adobe Express and you have uh, Firefly. How many of you use Adobe Express? So Adobe Express is formerly Adobe Spark and now they included a lot of stuff from Adobe Firefly within Express and I'm gonna show you how I can go back and forth between them. I, a lot of time what I use and this is what most of the seminar is going to be, I'm using it a lot in Photoshop because that will help me do a lot of stuff already. You already probably figured it out if you're using Photoshop. So there's a lot of Adobe Sensei already in Photoshop in terms of selections. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about it when I go into it a little bit. But now what do I have here in Adobe Firefly? So let's say the first one that you were talking about, right? It is text to image. So I'm gonna go in and click on that. So what can I do here? I have a lot of images that I can go in for inspiration and then I can see view samples. So let's say I have this area here and I'm viewing the sample. And when I view the sample, what I like, you also have the prompt all the way down here. My problem, I can tell you as a designer, sometimes I'm thinking, what kind of prompt am I going to use that's gonna make sense? A lot of time it's right. Castle in the sky, that's maybe not enough. They're really telling you to do very kind of like uh, prompts that kind of make sense. And then usually they say maybe a static prompt and then another one that has some kind of movement into it so you can start combining. So what do I have here? An alpine landscape with a modern tiny house built on a high mountain cliff in the foreground, still screen print, low contrast. Wow, that's a very big one what I have here, right? So what can you do with this one? I can go in and I'm in Firefly right now. 
and I can go to the left, the right side over here. And here on the right side, I can see some other information. Maybe I want to see it with graphics and maybe I want to see it as a digital art or maybe a different kind of effects to it. And all the way down here, color and tone. So I can go in and you can go start doing something like this with me. And let's say I say black and white. Maybe I like to see it just in black and white. And I would like to go in and this in studio lighting and the composition. I'm going to go in shot from below. I'm just playing with it again. I'm like you. We're all experiencing it together because it's so new. This is the part I can't tell you. I've been using it for years and this is how you should do it. I'm probably even using it maybe two months before you guys or three months before you guys. And now what I'm doing, I'm generating. So look what happened when I'm generating it. It's going to take a moment for me right now. And look what happened. Remember what happened before? Look what I'm getting right now. It's basically based on the same prompt, but look how it looks at the moment. A little bit different, right? So what if I want it right now? I'm going to go all the way to one of them. First of all, on the upper left side, you see the word edit. So I'm going to click here and what can I do in the word edit? I can go in to go to generative fill. I can say show similar if I want. I can go in and use a reference image to it. So basically it says, it's gonna take your prompt, but can you use this, the prompt as a reference image to something different? And then I have another one, do more in Adobe Express, and that's gonna tell me to go to Adobe Express, apply filter and adjustment, remove the background and text and add text. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to go in, use this as a reference. And by the way, I could have gone to this area here and I can basically go in and go into more actions. And if I click here, I can download, I can copy a link, I can copy an image, I can edit it in Adobe Express and I submit it to the Adobe Firefly Gallery, which I never do, but it's okay. So what I'm going to do here, I basically want to go back here and use that as a reference image. So now it is a reference image for me. And then I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to say fuzzy all the way down. So now if I do that, this is the reference image. You see all the way down, it shows me. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do another prompt. And then give me a prompt even, fuzzy. Right. So I was using a previous image. Can I erase that prompt? Just... Yes, you raise the prompt and give it your prompt. So I'm going to do, let's say, fuzzy dog with a huge hat and holding a balloon. I'm just making it up. Told you I'm not so good in that, but it's okay. I'm generating that. And let's see what I'm getting. So remember, I started from a prompt that... I... <laughs> I'm laughing right now. Look at this. I mean, kind of silly, right? But look what I just got. Okay, so let's say I got that, and I'm not sure I like it also, but I'm going to stay with the prompt, and I'm going to take away the digital art all the way down, and I take away the black and white, and I take away the shot from below, and I'm maybe going to give it a different kind of stuff. So I'm going to look at this one, and I'm just choosing to work maybe with this little guy here. And now I'm just going to go and just tell it to be something different. Look what happened right now. Do you see that I'm getting a different kind of guy already? And it's based on the other one that I started. So one thing that you can do, just go directly to Firefly. And then start looking at their prompts and then use their prompt for your own prompt as well. I'm just going to go back here. And then I'm just going to go back and do it. I mean, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go back to the main area that I have over here and look what I have over here. So I'm going to go back here all the way down and then go back to Adobe Firefly and see what I'm getting. So I'm getting this one is my original. Again, it is has the same prompt, but maybe I'm going to put here summer. 
time, make sure, and I'm guilty of that, no spelling mistakes and really use real words and not something that doesn't understand. Anytime I have a spelling mistake or I use a word that I don't know what I'm doing with it, it will tell me we don't understand you. So I'm going to say summertime in Los Angeles on the beach. And let's see what I'm getting right now. And you can see here, it used the color and the, from the prompt that I have because that's my reference image. And then it did summertime. If I'm going to go back here and take away the reference image, see, I clicked on the X all the way down and then it generating, look what I'm getting now. Do you see that? I just want to make sure you can start following me a little bit and see if it works for you. See what I just did? I took away the reference. I didn't like it. So all the way down, there was a little X. I said, go bye-bye. Now let's work with this one and see how I'm going to go in. And I'm going to add something and kids playing with a ball. A lot of time I found that if I do graphics and kids or people, I get awkward. I don't know if you tried. I get very awkward faces, like half of the stuff. But look at this. Look at the kids playing with the ball in summertime in LA and I refreshed it and then this is what I got over here. If I'm going to go back here to the side here and I'm going to go back here, I'm just going to go and say color and tone. So let's say I want to do more vibrant colors and then in the lighting, I'm going to say I want to have dramatic lighting and then I'm going to go in and just do different kind of effects. So I'm gonna regenerate it right away to get to see something a little bit different. This for me is a little awkward if you're liking it this. So if I needed really to use stuff like this that I'm taking it to Photoshop and start eliminating stuff because maybe I like the look of the background but I don't like the look of the kids over here because they don't look real Thing. But why did I get that and not an image? Because I, I asked it to be layered paper. Now I'm going to go back here and I don't want to have a layered paper. And I'm going to go into another area here. And then I'm just going to go back here and then click on something that says neon. Look at that now. Hopefully I'm going to get something that's going to look neon right now. And maybe I will be able to use that. Yes or no. Once again, I can go to the edit now and then I can go into generative fill directly from here or I can go show similar. I like the little, I don't know if you guys are using other Adobe Creative Cloud. When you're looking at typefaces, there's a the little symbol show same. It's the same symbol over here. And that shows you kind of a different one that you have over here. I'm not that crazy about it, but you can start playing with the stuff that you have until you get the area that you have. So some of you came a little bit later right now. So what I'm doing here, I'm going back to the same area that I have, and then you can see I'm back to the area here. So what does it mean generative fill as opposed to text to image? And text to image has a lot of images. Generative fill basically is going to show you different kinds of images. And I'm gonna show you because I played with it yesterday, but I could take any image. These are the image they give you over here. So let's say I'm gonna go into the fish. I want to do something else with it at the moment. And you, I'm in Firefly. All the way down, you do have some area. It's pretty small. I don't know if you see it, but you have a little brush over here. And then you can do with the brush setting. I can go into an area and start kind of erasing the area that I want to have here. And once I start erasing it, different sizes, right? Let's say I'm gonna do that. And once I have it here, they're asking you, what do you wanna have instead of that? So you did add or you did... I subtract, first I'm subtracting. So you see here, I'm just doing that. Now, 
give me a prompt. What do you guys have want to have instead of that, right? So I'm going to go back here. And then you say, describe the image you want to create. It tells you all the way down. So we can all describe something. So I'm going to say gold fish with big wings. I don't know. I'm just making it up. And then I'm just going to see that. And I'm going to show you later. I, I did some of them at home. And then you can see here, it's kind of like generating and generating the stuff that you have. And now look at what I get. In this one, I didn't get anything. And this one I didn't get, I didn't get any something really good. So there's not a big thing that I got. So maybe my prompt was not so good. So, yeah. I click on subtract mm -hmm. and then a circle appears. How do I- All the way down, when you go there, there is a place to write a prompt. Well, first I need to select the area. So yeah, yeah. If we go back here, you have this little brush here. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna go into the area of the brush and I wanna go in here and tell it, what do I want inside here? This actually works a lot better in Photoshop and I'll show you in a minute what I mean. But this is just directly over here. And then I'm gonna go back here and I wanna generate something over here. So I'm gonna do a prompt and I'm gonna go, say C horse with gold and then I'm going to generate and let's see if I'm getting something now I got something that looks like this that doesn't look like seahorse let's check on this one let's check on this one and let's check on that one you see I got some stuff if I want to keep it I can keep it in the image and now I put something different there and this is what I have. And I can go back here. I can also, do you see when you're working? Look at that, there is another symbol here that says background. So now look what happened. I erased the background. Did you see that? This little symbol there. Now they're asking you, what do you wanna put as a prompt? So I'm gonna say New York City, big, buildings and then let's see if i'm gonna get or landscape so we'll go in here and see if i'm gonna get something like this and then in a minute i'm gonna get something like that so i have the fishes that i have over here <laughs> and look at that they're over here and now i'm gonna create something like this so do i like it this is one prompt this is another one and this is another one so now I can keep it and now I can go back here and decide that I can go into the left side and I can basically download it and use it for something else. So there's different things that you can do directly in Firefly. Does that make sense? And of course, the different things that you can do Firefly versus Adobe Express, we're going to get into it. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a background? Yeah, you click. You click on it. Okay. And then once you click on the background, it took it away. Now do a prompt over here, okay. and then sure. just say, sure. uh, "Yeah, you can just go back here and start playing with it and just do that, yeah. and click on it and see what you get there." And now, so you can start playing with different things. A lot of time, what I'm doing is a lot of trial and error. I just playing with it. And then this is something that's still waiting for us kind of like in the corner and looking to see what else can we do with it. So now I can go back and I can say remove, I can do different kind of things and I can go back into Firefly and then what else can I do here? Another one, they have text effect. The truth is I'm not a big, I don't like it as, as a person or a designer, I'm not crazy about it. A lot of people are just, wow, what can we do here? So what does it mean? This is different kind of text effect and they're giving you different kind of text effect to look at this. Of course, they're gonna have the word Firefly to start with and they're showing you over here, different kind of effects that you have. But I don't want to write the word Firefly over here. So I'm going to say welcome. 
And then I don't really like this prompt over here. So I'm gonna go in all the way down here and then I can choose something or maybe I wanna go in and go to my old prompt and say bagels with tomatoes. So I made my own prompt and now it is thinking for you and telling you and in a minute you can see, you see the bagels over here and some tomatoes, you can see it's almost lunchtime and I have it over here and then you can see the bagels and tomatoes and again, they're doing it in different ways a little bit. So you can see the different letters over here. So sometimes if you wanna check it out, check it out with one letter and see if you like it. So people check it out and you can see the different. And then if you like the one that you have, basically you can go in and kind of go in and download it. You can also go back here and match the shape to different kind of type. And then also you can go and match the shape to a different kind of background if you wanna go and work with it. So the different little things that you can do, you can also take some vector stuff, which I'm going to go to it a little bit later, and then bring it in Firefly. But what happened if you guys, how many of you are using Photoshop? So let's look at Photoshop for a minute. I'm going to launch Photoshop and it's Photoshop 2024. Because in Photoshop 2024, Basically, you have all the real assets that you want to work with and everything with it. Once again, I am not going to, I can use any kind of image that I have over here and start working with it. So I'm just going to go back here and then I can open any kind of image. Or if I downloaded the stuff from before from Firefly, let's say if I download it right now with you guys, Look what I have over here. I downloaded stuff and I can go in and bring, let's say, this little one with the fishes over here. So you see, I created it in Firefly and now I have it over here. And then it is kind of like a weird kind of composition, but it gave me some idea what do I want to do with it. But I'm in Photoshop right now. So what do you do to Photoshop? Because the idea is enhancing some stuff within Photoshop while you're working with it, right? So you can use any image that you have on your desktop or any image that you create already in Firefly and start getting into Photoshop at the moment. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about, it's even before Firefly and all this information that you had, Adobe came out in Photoshop with amazing selection tools. But behind the scene, they were actually, they were uh, Adobe Sensei. So they have some kind of artificial intelligence. So what does it mean and where are they? If you never use Adobe Photoshop, if I go to the left side, and this is my toolbar, and if I click on the second one all the way down, it says object selection tool. Of course, now within Photoshop, you can even have a video there to show you how to use it in case you don't know how to use it. And also see a quick video from the web. But if I just click on it, look what I can have right now and just watch a little bit my option all the way up here. And I'm gonna do it super slow while I have over here while I'm gonna go in and work with that. So all the way up in my option, I basically say, I have something that says object finder. So by default, it is triggered by, I'm gonna find for you an object right away and maybe very fast. Is it gonna be perfect? Not sure, not for everything. The other thing that you have next to it is the references. So show all object. So I'm gonna click over here and look what the machine is doing right away, saying me, I have a fish, I have some kind of grass, I have a lot of fish and I have a lot of buildings. Do you want me to go and look for that? If I wanna go there. I also can go back here and here is the object that you have. Do you wanna see the object finder in, why is it pink? It's a default. Maybe you wanted to see it in yellow. 
because that's how you like. So now you see it in yellow. I just had it by default and my default I think was magenta and that's, I have it. By the way, if you don't want to see it, you can just turn it off and say, never show me the overlay. I don't want to see it. It bothers me sometimes. I say, I know what I have. I know what I want to see. The next thing that's very important is how do you want to select? There's two ways to select this object. There's all one in a rectangle view and one in a lasso tool. So I'm going to go to the rectangle and look what I'm doing. I'm going to click and drag around the fishy, not even, and then releasing. And look what it did. Yay. You see the fish is selected? Yes. I the one I did it with rectangle. Yeah. And even if I did it very big, is it always gonna happen perfectly? Absolutely not. I can show you some images that it doesn't take it. But of course, but now what can I do with this one? By default already. Look what I have over here. I have the new taskbar. Do you guys see a taskbar? And what is the taskbar saying? Generative fill. Do you see that? I'm going to click on generative fill. And now it's going to ask you, what do you want to put in there? So it's kind of the generative fill that you turn around. But this one is more precise because you're going with your own little selections over here. So now I want to go in, give me a prompt. What do we want to do instead of the fish? Be creative. I lost it. <laughs> Flying super hero. In what? With a cape. Let's see if we're getting it. Yay, I like when somebody tells me, what if, I like the fish though. Isn't he cute? He's kind of cute. It's okay. So this is what I got here. Okay. Do we like it or not? So now look what you have here in the taskbar. In the taskbar, you have kind of like three, you get three options over here for now by default. You also can go right away to your properties panel. And then you can say, this is the first one. This is the second one. Not so good. Oh, look at that. Not as bad, right? Well, maybe I want to have another version at the moment. Let's play this. So right now, I'm just going to go in and generate again. So it's regenerating for me another option. And then you're going to ask me, if you save the file and then you open it in three days, am I going to have that there? Yes, you will. So you can go back and forth to everywhere. And look at that. This I have here. This I have this one here. And this I have this guy over here as generative fill over here. Let's check the layers. Yes. Yes. Right now, what I have is it's taking right away the stuff that I have. I can go in and try to play in or do another generative fill to it with a different selection to the area that I have and see if I'm getting something completely different. Because why is it doing it? Because if I click on the option key over here, this, this is what the generative fill is saying. It's a mask around the fish. Now I'm going to go to the mask. So this is the part that I'm happy it's happening because everybody says, we don't need to know Photoshop anymore. Yes, you do. Because you still need to know selections. You still need to know a little bit about masking. You still need to know the core stuff. So what do I have here with the mask? If I'm going to go back here to any brush that I have, and I'm going to go to a brush over here and look what I'm doing. I'm going to go to white. And then I'm going to go back here and look what I'm doing on the white area that I have. I'm kind of changing a little bit the area that I have, and then I'm just going to play with it a little bit. So I'm going to go back here, and then it's going to be a little different kind of shape there. So I went in and kind of fixed a little bit the mask. But the thing is, it's not a standalone right now. What does it mean? If I turn off my background, this is what I get here, which is good. 
I can go back here and see if I can do something else with it. So I can go in and do a selection there and do another generative and do stuff. Another thing that I can do here, I'm gonna try to go back here and take away the area. I took away the prompt and now I'm gonna do generate. And let's see what I'm getting. I might get something absolutely different. And really what I'm trying to do as a designer, I try to, and look what I'm getting. This one is not so good. And this one is this. And this one, I got this one here. And then I got back here. It just gave me just a general awkward little prompt because I didn't have a prompt and it gave me something like that. Okay. So now maybe I want to go in and do something else. I don't want to have the support hero. Maybe I'm going to go to my uh, crop tool and I'm just going to go back here and just do it a little bit different over here. And I'm going to go back here. So first of all, in the generate area, I can put something else there and I get, but what if I don't? If I'm just going to click generate, it is going to extend my image. So also the question is going to be resolution right now because the image that I have maybe was kind of higher resolution or something. What you extend is not very high. It's still 20, I think 1028 by 1028. So if I'm going to zoom into it, you can see that the area that extended a little bit for me, it's not as sharp as my original area that I had that was better. So this is stuff that you have to take into consideration, but you can go in and create stuff like that. So that's called generative extend. I'm just extending the area that I have and I can see this one and maybe I can go in and get to this area over here. And again, I can go and regenerate it and get absolutely something completely different with it. So you're gonna need to go in and kind of try the stuff and see what you're getting. So let's say I have one here, another one here, and let's say I have this one here. Now, do I wanna go in and do another generative fill? Absolutely, I can even go in to just an area. Let me see here. I'm just gonna go in and just do a rectangle. I don't have, I want to put something else in there as a rectangle to the area. So I'm going to click to generative fill and I'm going to have a little drop, a prompt. So now I'm going to do your superhero with a red cape holding a flower. I don't know if they do that. And let's see what we are going to get over here because this is kind of like a straightforward. And then I got part of it here, which actually I like it. I got a got, wow, a superhero here and I got another superhero here with a red cape. Do we like this one that we have? Or we can go back here and regenerate to another sample. Yes, it will go in and remember really the area that you have there. So you can extend the area and get more stuff to it. Or you can do another. <laughs> there, I always start, okay, look at this superhero and look at this superhero. And then, of course, you can go in and say, I don't want this one. And then I can say, I don't want that one. And now I have just the one that I want to go in and play with. So depending on the area that you have. So now, can you do something else in Photoshop with it at the moment? It's not a real selection. What, I mean, what does it mean? If I had the image from somebody else and I end up going back there and really selecting a superhero from somewhere else, from Adobe stock and bringing it as a layer, I can start moving it around and do other stuff. I just want to show you what's going on with this one. If I go to the move tool and click on him and moving, look how he's moving. He's moving with the background that has underneath him. 
I just want you to make sure you understand that. This is the move tool. If you click on the letter V, that's your move tool. And I want to show you in a minute the difference between moving normal layers in Photoshop or moving this one. He doesn't, that not just this guy is moving around, just everything that you have over here is just moving together. So what can I do over here? I can go to my layers panel and I do have some blending modes. So I can go in and do overlay and now look at that, or I can go and do maybe uh, linear burn. And now I can see that the superhero is melting into the building and maybe it's looking a little bit better while I have it over here. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like I can go in and play with it with Photoshop blending mode. Where are the blending modes? If you go to your layers panel, all the way in the middle, it says normal. And inside these are Photoshop blending modes. So I can go in and check them out. Look at this. And then lighten mode, maybe I wanna go to soft light. So maybe it's gonna look a little linear light. Difference, ready for Halloween, subtract, something doesn't make, depending what are blending modes, they are taking a, looking at pixels in different colors based on the image below that. So you can play and it's non-destructive because you can see, you can change it. Yes. Okay, so let's go back here and look at the stuff that I have over here. Great question over here. So now I'm going to go back here to the object selection tool. And then I'm going to go back here and select, go and go and do it on top of that. And let me see. And now I just have the superhero. And then let's check if I selected it okay, because I really want to see. So I went to the sub i mean the object selection tool because that's the fast one that you can use and by the way if you don't have a fast machine it takes longer to do it it really need kind of like a faster machine to work with i'm going to go into an area say select and mask and in select and mask i'm going to go back here and i want to see what i selected over here and then i'm going to go back here and show that on top of white. And uh, this is the area that I have over here. This is what I selected. I can also go back here and play with the radius a little bit and see his hair a little bit. And then all the way down, I can go back here and output it into different kind of ways. It might not let me go in and output it in a certain way, but instead of selection, maybe I'm gonna say, new layer with the layer mask. And this is what I got over here. The top one, now what I have, I go into my move tool again and look at this. That's how I selected. This is what I got, right? Because that's what the machine did for me. It did, it did a cutout. Yes. So, and so when you're moving it over, it's the background. It's gone. That's it. It's standalone. Now I just have this one. What can I do with this one now? Now you can do anything you want with this because you have the figure that you brought it from whatever you did. Can I go in and fix it a little bit? Of course. Can I play with it? Can I bring it to another image? Absolutely. I can go into file and open. And let's say I do have some images that I have. And then I'm going to have like into a Photoshop image that I have over here. And then I'm gonna go back here and I have another Photoshop image. And I wanna go back here and click and drag him to bring him to another image. All what I did is I went to another image, is a bigger one. I'm gonna do Command or Control T and I'm gonna go in and make him a little smaller. And look at that, he's here. But now you're gonna ask another question, which is really good, right? Let's go back here and then you see here, this is the image. So you see, if I click on the option, this is the mask. So I can go in and play a little bit with the mask and make it a little bit nicer. Kind of pretend if I go back here. So maybe I'm gonna go with, 
I have a weird mask of uh, brush, but let's say that's good. Look at this mask that I have. This is the brush that I have from before. And that's the image. It's non-destructive. If I go in and turn off the mask, now look what I have. The buildings are there. Remember them? Because really what I did in Photoshop, I cut him out from the stuff that I did. I still have the original image in there. So it's absolutely non-destructive. I'm going to hold on the shift key on and off and I have the mask over here. So it's really important to understand a little bit masking when you work with Photoshop, where even when you go and work with Firefly and everything that you have. Does that make sense? I'm just going to get like, I'm going to open a few images that I have here. And then let's say I have another, let's say I'm going to go in to this image and I'm going to go and open. So this is the image that you saw before. And then I want to go in and create a different kind of shirt right now, right? It's a headshot that somebody took. I didn't take the headshot. So I'm going to go in to object selection tool. And then I'm going to go into just the area over here and then click over here and then see if it's going to select the right thing. And it did select the right thing, but maybe I want to have this area. Maybe it is part of my her shirt over here. So if I hold on the shift key, I'm going to add a little bit to the selection. And this is the selection that I'm getting. I don't want to get her earrings. So I might jump over to just the lasso tool. Hold down the optional alt key and subtract this from my selection. So I want to make sure my selection is kind of okay. I can even go to select and mask. And basically, look at that. This is the shirt, and I see I have a little mistake over here. So I'm going to go to a brush, and I'm going to take away this part. So it is really good to work with the mouth or with like a pen, and I'm just going to go and take it away. What if I wanted to go in and feather it a little bit, my selection, so it's not too harsh? And then all the way, I'm going to output it into a selection. Me, as a person that uses Photoshop for years, I love saving my selections. Some people say you don't need to save your selections anymore. You like make a layer and put anything. I do save my selection the old-fashioned way. How do I do it? Select and save selection. And I'm going to call it shirt one. Where is it going? It's going to another panel that it is the channel panel. And that's what I have all my selections. But I have to save it now as an Adobe Photoshop file or a TIFF file. If it is a JPEG, there's no selections. So I'm just going to do it in case. File, save as. And then I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to save it on my desktop as an Adobe Photoshop file. Let's say the following day, I don't have time to do anything right now. I have to run out and I'm opening it again. And this is what I have. And I know I have a selection. Let's check it out. Where do you have your selection? If I'm going to go to my channel panel, if I go all the way down here, this is shirt number one. Do you see that? It says, that's what I did. And if I turn it on, you can see whatever you have read over here, that's the area that's masked. And whatever you see black in front of you, that's what I selected. That's okay. But now I really want to load it and start working on it. I can go to two places, select, load selection. I'm going to get a dialog box that it's super important to read before you click OK, because look at the first thing. What is it asking me? It says channel layer two transparency. What is my layer two transparency? That's my regular image. If I click OK, what am I loading? I'm loading the selection for the entire layer. 
So everything, maybe I'm going to change even layer two and I'm going to call that Gilly. So that's the model. So now if I'm going to say select, load selection, you can see it is asking me if I want to go back and if I'm going to go and load Gilly or I'm going to go to any channel, do I want to load a channel? Gilly one, look at that. I can have up to, I think 45 channel, I forgot the name, 45, 46 channels that I can have over here to start loading. Now I have it. I can do the old fashioned way. I can go to any adjustment and put different kind of effects there from the adjustment. I can copy and paste another image and put it inside. So I can do stuff that's not in AI, but what if we wanna help AI? So I'm gonna go to generative fill and what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna call it silk shirt with flowers. And I'm gonna say generate. So now it is gonna try to generate for me from AI. But really a good selection, look what I got over here. <laughs> I got a silk shirt with flower. I got one here. And the third one, that's what I got, yay. So sometime you get, this is actually nice, right? So let's do another one. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to go in to this one and see if I'm getting another one that I have. So again, I don't know why you're getting here and now I'm getting another one over here and then I'm gonna get another one over here. So it's basically emphasizing the silk shirt more than just the flowers over here that I have. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say silk shirt. And maybe I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say red silk shirt. I'm changing the prompt. And I'm gonna have different kind of ways to look at it. And then I'm gonna make a decision which one I'm going to start and using. So that's nice, right? I did red. And let's look at this one. This is really red and this is not red. That's okay. But you can see what I'm getting back and forth to the stuff that I have. So I can start using different things. So maybe I wanna go back here and just use that and have that as a way of working. Cause I wanna tell you what I'm doing because if I turn off the girl, this is what I get. So basically when you do the before and after, it's a little tricky over here because it's gonna look a little bit different that you have because it's always has to relate to the image that you are doing the fill to. So let's say this is the girl here. If I'm gonna go in to the original girl and move her here, look what start happening, right? I'm just moving the stuff that I have over here. So if I'm gonna go here, and I'm just moving Gilly else off, that's gonna stay here. So that's not good. So look what I'm doing in this case. In this case, what I'm doing, I'm basically duplicating the bottom layer. Because I wanna show you how to do a before and after with this, right? Because maybe you need to show a before and after to a client, to anything that you have. So what am I doing right now? I'm going to Gilly. And I'm going to say duplicate layer. And I'm going to go, can I call it Gilly 2 or Gilly copy or whatever I want to do over here and click OK. Now I'm going to go to the bottom Gilly. I'm going to turn these guys off so you can see just the bottom. And here's the trick that I'm using all the time. I'm going to make a little, make everything more organized over here. And I want you to see just the layers over here. And now I'm clicking on her and I'm kind of moving her outside of the area. I'm moving her and moving her and moving her until you don't really see her. 
She's here, but you don't see it. I want to extend the canvas based on that, not AI. I'm going to image and I'm going to say reveal all. And look what it did for me. It's basically moved her to another area. Now I'm going to go into the second gilly and I'm going to go here. You see what happened? This is my before and after. So I'm going to take the original, that or the reference for form, and then, and now, but another thing that's not going to work all the way, look at that. If I go and load the selection, where do you think the selection is going? Select, load selection. If I'm going to go back here to the shirt, it's going here. You have to remember that because it's always going to the original area. Well, I want to go into the second gilly over here, and now I can do a generative fill. So I'm going to turn off this, and now I'm going to do another generative fill. And then I'm going to go in and say shirt, lace shirt with birds. Why am I doing it? I don't know. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think so. Let's go back to it. Uh, yes, you can, I think, now to open it. It used to not, but now it is. So let's say what I have here, nothing. My prompt was not good. Nothing has happened. So I can do something else. I just want to tell you, like, that's how it works here, right? So I can do different kind of thing and do the before and after. So I want to show you different other things that I did before. And then if you want me, I can actually, I have a list of who registered. I can send you the file if you want, or you can give me your email and I can send you, because basically this is the PSD file and I have the before and after. So I do have that. And this one, I did the before and after. And you can see here in the same trick, I did like this the before and after. So I have the regular shirt, I have the nice flower and something that I have, let's say what the prompt was for this one, because I don't remember. And this one was the prompt here. And then this one was another prompt. There's another one here and another one there. You see the different ones that I have over here. So I'm gonna go back here. This is the lace. When you have the prompt, it will tell you pink sweater, which I don't know if I wanted that. I called it pink sweater and that's what I got. So I got this one and then I have another one over here. So I don't know why I got it, but you still see the prompts that you have. And then if you click on it, it says silk shirt with flowers over here. So you can see the really silk shirt with the flowers. I did get it also before like that. The same idea that I had before. And I have another one like this. And I end up using one of them. So you still have the layers panel. And then you can go into the layers panel. And this is maybe one of them. And on top of that, I have my original. And then on top of that, I have one of the silks. And on top of that, I have this one. And on top of that, I have another one. So a couple of putting different kind of layers because also you can do a screenshot and bring it back, whatever you feel like doing and do a set of samples that you have. And the question is, can you have your own image if you go into Firefly? So I'm gonna go back here into Firefly and then I'm gonna go back here and back to that. And then I'm gonna go in to generate uh, an image over here. And I'm going to go back here and do text to image. And I'm going to go back here. So in this case, I don't know if I can go and bring an area over here right now and bring my own image. I do think you can. You bring this. I saw it before that you can bring some kind of your own image and then bring the area that you have here. But in Adobe Express, you can bring your own image and go into Firefly and do on top of that. You yes, you do. I'm going to jump into Adobe Express in a minute. And I'm going to go back here 
and let's say the aspect ratio, the content, the style. In the future, you're absolutely going to be able to bring your own references, images, and bring everything there to go and bring it with it. In a minute, I'm going to jump also to uh, Adobe Express, but I'm still kind of in Photoshop because I want to show you another tool that's really awesome. And the other tool that you have, if I'm going to go even, okay, thank you. <laughs> I will actually uh, send you guys a recording. Okay. So let's say if I'm going to go back here to another image that I have, and then I have inspiration, and then I'm going to go in to Photoshop and look at the image that I have. I have an image of a house, right? And then what can I do with this image of a house? You can do anything that you want with it, but what if you kind of don't really want to have all the flowers around? There's a lot of ways in Photoshop to work and eliminate the flowers from the image. And it is with something called content aware in Photoshop. So if I'm going to go to my layers panel, and then let's say I'm going to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to say duplicate layer, I'm going to go to the duplication, and I can go, let's say, to a selection tool. And I'm going to go in and select, let's say, the front flowers over here, just as a selection. And I'm going to go to edit. And I'm going to go to fill. And in the fill, I have something called content aware, which is absolutely random. And then I'm going to click OK. And then it is going to go in and try to just go back here and just click and do the content aware. Another way that I can do over here, it took it away, but it's not really great. You see, it's not good. I'm going to deselect and I can see the before and after. So I can continue and doing it, not do generative fill yet. There's another one that does content aware also. I can go and select, let's say, this area. And I can go to edit and say content aware fill over here. And I'm going to get a dialog box over here and it will show me how it is taking away the area based on the reference that I have in the green area that I have. So I can start taking away the green reference. So I can go in and say, I don't want it to reference from here and look what I get. And I can decide, do I want to use it or not? And I can start working in all this area and basically start having a brick wall over there on a different layer. I'm just going to cancel it out. So there's different ways of doing different kind of content aware. And if you do a, a full-blown Photoshop class, which we do offer here for 10 weeks, and then you can take um, the certification as well, then you learn all the modification that you have with Photoshop. But let's say you don't want to know Photoshop so well yet, but you need to take away stuff so urgent. So one way of doing it, duplicating a layer is pretty easy, right? You go to the layers panel and you go in and say duplicate layer, or you're gonna go to layer, a duplicate layer. I duplicate it to see the before and after. I am going to go back here and I am going to go to a new tool. And if I click on the letter J, which I call it the J galleries and hold it down, I have a bunch of tools there, and one of them is Spot Healing Brush Tool, which is really for retouching. If you start retouching different faces and all kind of stuff, it's really a cool tool to use. And again, it's going to be later your choice, right? You're the designer. You have a lot of tools in Photoshop. I never tell people, don't use this tool. It's not a good one. As long as you use it in a smart way, in a non-destructive way, either use the non-destructive features or duplicate your layer, you're good. It's your way of using the tool in your own creative way, right? Don't let anybody tell you don't use it like this. But I'm going to go to the new remove tool. And then in the new remove tool, right away what I'm getting over here 
it tells you of it tells you how to use the tool right away and it says easily remove distractions such as object people and imperfection watch a video about it if you want to do that it's basically it is brushing the area and letting you kind of use the tool that you have so i'm going to go in here and how do i want to do it i don't really want to do it in this case on the duplication completely because maybe i want to do a before and after later or anything else so i'm going to open an empty layer even if you don't use a lot of Photoshop, you know you can go to the Layers panel. There is an option area on the right side and you say new layer. And give it a new name and then go and say, take away or remove. I'm naming it. I'm on an empty layer. I want this remove tool to take a sample from the bottom layer, but do the result to the layer on top, because then maybe I can play a little bit with opacity and do different kind of effects. Anytime you want to do things like this, anything like going working with the healing tool or going uh, with the clone tool and you open it in an empty layer in Photoshop, you have to tell Photoshop how to sample the layer. Because now, if I want to do something, nothing is going to happen because I'm on an empty layer. I have to go all the way to the top and tell it to sample all layer, telling it sample the layer from below to work. Because if this is not work, touch, look at this, nothing is going to happen. It's going to try to remove an area. If I don't sample the area here, it's not going to be there. See, that it just doesn't know what to do. So I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to say sample all layers and look what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of work around it. Look at this. It's not bad. Do you see what happened? I'm like excited. Look how nicely it took it away. Of course, sometimes you have to fix it. If you just want to see what it did, this is what it did behind the scene, right? So I'm just gonna go in here. If I wanna do the new one to another layer, so don't wanna put it only on one layer, I can open another empty layer and another empty layer. Or I'm just gonna go back here and let's just stay here. And then I might go back here and let's say I'm just gonna go back here and I don't wanna have this plant. And maybe it didn't do it the right way. I can take the brush and make the brush a little smaller or bigger while I'm working with it. So now I can make the brush a little smaller and maybe I'm just gonna do the stuff over here. Again, you can go back and forth and then figure out if this is the tool that you wanna use, but this is another one that it's basically artificial intelligent or AI tool that removes the tool right away from the area that you have and look what you start working. So now, do I have a before and after? Absolutely in a minute. First of all, I can turn it off. Look at this. No harm done, right? I duplicated everything. So I'm really covering myself. I'm just going to finish and maybe do a before and after in a minute. And I did it to one layer because, you know, I want to and look at this. It's not so good. Of course, you can do with another tool and another tool, but I'm just deciding that I want to have just the house over here and later on do something else to it. So I took away everything and now I have it over here and I'm zooming out. Everything looks different. Now, maybe I want to start doing something else with it. That's going to be generative fill. Because maybe I want to have this house now. I took away the, the trees. And again, this is really for inspiration because it's faster. 
Because if you need to do a real project for somebody and maybe later do something more precise, now you can show the client almost like a storyboard. Look at my inspiration. Look what I want to do over here. And based on that, I want to start working. So I'm going to go into the copy, hold on the shift key. I can take the two of them. I don't want to merge it. I'm going to go to the flyout menu and I'm going to make it into a smart object. Now, once I have it, I'm going to go in, let's say, to the object selection tool, and I'm going to select the center in the area over here. And now I'm going to do generative fill. Who do you want to be inside the door over here? Do you want to have something inside there? So I'm going to go back and say big, I mean, and say dog with brown fur. Let's see if he's going to go and be in here. So I eliminated stuff, which going in with the remove tool. And then I'm going now again to generative fill. <laughs> Fun. See, the, the, one of the reasons that I like it, I see you guys laughing too. Every time I sit in my studio and I do something and everybody hears, I'm cracking up. I'm cracking by myself. I'm giggling. Because either it's very bad or wonderful or funny, right? So I'm like, yeah, look at that. So I have this little dog over here. And now I'm going to go in. Look at this dog. Oh, that looks really weird. <laughs> I have a dog very like. And this one, I don't have the dog. So I have it over here. And then I'm just going to go back here and generate it again. Maybe if I get different kind of dogs and tell them what kind of dogs I'm going to get and things like this, I can go back here and just go and go, ooh, that's not looking good. And I have here, no good, not good, not good. Whoa. It's another little guy and another big dog over here. So you can see I can put different things. I think we're going to stay with the little guy. What do you think? He does look a little bit better over here. And then you can start putting different kind of things like plants, palm trees. Uh, when I put people and all kind of stuff like that, it doesn't look so great sometimes, but anything that you want to go and put in there, just use your imagination and start working with it. I want to open something that I have over here. And then you can see here, I have the stuff that I have over here. And then I'm going to go back here and let's look at the stuff that I have already here. And I'm going to go in and open something that I did before. So look at that. I'm just going to go in and open it. And look what I have over here. I basically had something that generated different kind of stuff in it. Let's look at the image that started with it. If I'm going to go in and really check my layers panel, Look what I have over here. I'm going to turn it off here, and this is the image that I have. So maybe you got kind of like, I didn't even do it before and after, but for inspiration, maybe somebody wants you to do something that looks a little bit different in generative field. So I end up going in and put some kind of an umbrella over here. And then if you're looking under here, this is the selection that I made. And then I put in another area, I think I put a bear over here. I'm going to go in and check out in my properties. And you can see right in the properties, you see mainly what you have over here. And it says, I said, big brown bear. So the good news about it is somebody sent you an image that they did generative fill. You have the prompts over there. And then I can go in a big brown bear with a flower on his head. And then I'm going to generate. So now I'm going to go back here and regenerate the stuff that I have. And then let's see if we're getting something a little bit different. So I got a, a toy bird over here, not something that I like. I got another flower over here. And then I got something absolutely not great. So I guess my prompt was not actually perfect, 
but you can see over here, if I don't want to have the prompt at all, I can actually go back here and turn it off and not have it. So I have over here, I have another kind of bear and I have a bird and I have another kind of fishes and all the way down here, what I had here, I generated and I said hair over here and I, I mean rain. And then I got some rain all the way there and then created some other stuff on top of it. Why is it green? Because I made it overlay. But if I go back to a different kind of, let's say I'm going to go into normal, this is the rain. Because I told it to be rain for the entire image. So I went in, that's another rain and that's another rain. So let's say I wanted to use this rain for the entire image. I can go back here and say overlay and look what it looks. So I have the raindrops over here, just I'm using. So what I'm trying to tell you, you can use it to the entire image. You can use it to the selection. You can even go in now and extend the image if you want. And let's see what we are getting. So if I'm going to go back here and extend it, and then I'm going to go back here, I'm just going to go and do generative fill and just, oh, I didn't extend the right one. And it was supposed to be on the right layer. When you do that, you have to be on the right layer. Okay. If you go back here, you have to expand it. And I have to be on the right layer that I have over here. And now I'm just going to generate it. So now it's going to expand the entire image that you have. So a little bit of knowledge, of course, of Photoshop is required if you want to start manipulating your generative field. If you don't want to know anything about, see, it didn't look so good because maybe I didn't do it on the right layer over here and it didn't do the right stuff. So I know why it didn't look good because the rain was not on the right thing. So if I took away the rain, look what I have here. Now it looks a little bit bigger and it's expanded the stuff that I have. Because when I did the rain, the layer was a little bit smaller. If I do select all over here now, and now I'm going to go back here and say rain, you'll see it's going to do it to the entire image and now it's going to be okay. So you really have to pay attention how much you selected stuff and where are you going? Does that make sense? So this part is looking at Firefly, which is pretty easy. It's self-explanatory. And this is what I have over here, kind of like on top of the rain. And if I want to go back here, it doesn't really look okay because I don't think I did it into the right layer. But I'm going to be happy with this one. It's fine with me. Another thing to look at, you have the expand, you have the generative fill, you have your selection tool that are based on Adobe Sensei, and then you have the remove tool. So that gives you features that work faster and they're based on generative uh, AI. There's other filters that are actually based on the Adobe Sensei, which based on kind of the same technology. And these are the filters that you call them the neural filters. So what does it mean? If I'm gonna go into this area here and then I'm gonna zoom out to it and I do have just an image that looks like this. And by the way, I did that. This image did not look like this. It looked a little bit different before. If I'm double clicking it, this is how I started this image. It started from a simple image that I expanded and then I just built on it generative fill. I told the machine, bring me some flowers. I told the machine, bring some castle. I told the machine, bring some castle in the sky and bring bunch of, and then bring a little uh, sailboat over here. That's all what I told the machine just to go back here and then be proud of it. And I can do anything else and not have something so basically, this is what I have over here. Oh, that's not the right one. I'm going to go back here. House in the mountain. And then I go back here and I see everything here. So you can see it's a smart object. So because it's a smart object, what well, we call it also, it's a smart filter. 
So if I'm going to go back here to my filters now, I do have something called neural filters. Do you want to start experimenting with that? They're not kind of like they call it AI, but they call it Adobe Sensei. So they are based on artificial intelligence that baked into Photoshop directly. So what do I have all the way? Landscape mixer. So you can see a style transfer over here. So I'm gonna go back here and then I'm going to go into, let's say style transfer. And I'm gonna go back here and have different kind of style over here. And you see, it has to be downloaded. Why do I have a little area that's not working great right there? I don't know. Let me just cancel it out. Oh, I think because I have this little boat over here. In my, okay, I know why. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to neural filters. I have it again over here. It's okay. I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to go to different kind of styles and look at this. I'm just going to go in and look at the area that I have. And if I'm going to go in and click OK, look what I'm getting over here. A different style of the landscape that I have. And this different style is basically based on Adobe Sensei and these little filters that you have. So that's another thing to look at. I'm going to go back now to uh, Firefly. Oops. and then go back here to Adobe Firefly and let's see what we're getting over here. And why is it not happening over here? Because my machine went down. You let me know if you see me again. Do you guys see me again? No. Yes, we're back. Sorry, a uh, little interruption in the middle. The connection is going away. So you can see I have that. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get out of Photoshop and I'm going to go back to my Adobe Firefly because we want to see what else we have there in case you're not working with uh, Photoshop as much over here. So I'm going to go back here and then in a minute, you'll see something else that you have. So what do we have here? I generate the type effect and all the way down, look what I have over here. And also to give you some inspiration over here, get inspired for samples to see what you have and you can go in and do different kind of things and have reference files and everything that you have. But now look what I can do, generative recolor. So what does it mean generative recolor? They're going to show you some kind of uh, vector files that you can recolor them. And over here, you actually can load your own image over here. So I'm going to go back here and open my image. And I'm going to do, I'm going to open some kind of Adobe Illustrator image that I have. I don't think I have right now anyone that I can really see, but let's say, see if I have some kind of SVG file. So I'm going to go in. I don't think I have an SVG file, which is not going to work right now. So I'm going to look at the sample that I have. So let's look at this sample. This is an image that they have. And then basically what they want you to go back here look at the side over here and then basically telling you, do you want to go and recolor it based on the other style that you have? So I'm going to click over here and that's actually going to go in and I'm going to click on one. And then if I go in and regenerate it, you can see different kinds of colors. I'd rather do that actually in Adobe Illustrator because it's much easier to go in and work directly to the area that you have over here. So I'm gonna fire up Adobe Illustrator. And then this is Adobe Illustrator 2023. And then I'm gonna go and click here to have Adobe Illustrator. 
And really what I want to do is just open an Adobe Illustrator file that I have. So I'm going to do file and open, and then I'm going to go into my Illustrator file. And then let's say I'm going to go in and open AI Adobe Symmetry. Let's say I have something that I created, and then I'm going to zoom in to the first artboard that I have. And I want to create and give suggestions for different kind of colors that I have. You can do that in something called recolor in Illustrator and start really doing it based on what you choose. But you also can go to Illustrator and basically just select the area, let's say that you have, and then go to a place called recolor artwork. And all the way down, you have something says advanced options. And then instead of doing the stuff that maybe you have to click on it, you can get for inspiration, generative recolor. So instead of stop playing over here, you can go back here and say, what are the suggestions me to do? You have a prompt. You can tell it to be different kind of colors, or you can say based on the one that you have, salmon sushi. And then you can go back here, and then you can go in here, and this is what you get. Do I like to have it like this? How cool is that? Do I like to have it like that? How cool is that? Do I like to have it like this? Do I like to have it like that? And then I'm gonna go into the advanced option and then I can click here and add that to my colors over here. And I have it over here. I can go back to the recolor and I can go back here to generative and I can just find something else. And of course you kind of go in and select it and maybe you wanna duplicate it and look at this options that you have over here. And this one says summer by the sea. Let's do another prompt. And I'm gonna say ice cream with chocolate and cherries. Maybe that have different kind of colors to it. So you can give it your own little prompts over here and now I can go back here and look what I'm getting. I'm getting this, the generative field within Adobe Illustrator. And then I'm going to go back here and that's our recoloring it with the prompt that you have. And then you have, of course, user guideline. And then you can go back here and add different kind of colors to it and all kind of stuff. And then you can start generating the stuff that you have. And let's see if I'm going to get something absolutely different. So I have that and that's it. This is what I have here. I can copy, I can paste it. I can do anything. So if I have it over here, I can go back here and select that or select the entire thing. And basically I can copy it. And then because I'm an illustrator, it is all vector. I can go back here. Of course, it did a lot of artboards over here because that's what I used before, but I'm gonna go into one artboard and paste it and this is it. So I can get some inspiration also here. The third one that I wanted you to see is Adobe Express. How many of you used Adobe Express before? So this is super easy, right? And is it's really, it's web-based. And then it's really for inspiration and creating some kind of graphics on the fly that you have. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type express. I'm going to go back here. I don't want to do this one over here. I'm going to go to a new window and I'm going to type express that Adobe that com. And I'm going to go back here to create stuff. So this is stuff that I have over here and then all the way down, you can see some stuff and it says recent. It's basically stuff that I played with yesterday. Look what I did yesterday. I kind of ended up creating some kind of a doggy from stuff that was a generative feel that I have. So this is the image that I have over here. 
and I created it from something that I started over here. I can go back here and remove the background, but I'm gonna start from the beginning. So let's say I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to start to do stuff, something for, let's say, for social media. So I'm gonna click over here and let's say I'm gonna start from create from scratch and I'm gonna start something. So I'm gonna go in and upload an image or maybe I say, I don't know what to do right now. So I'm gonna go to text to image here. So if I'm gonna go into text to image over here, basically when I'm going to go back here, I'm gonna go in to click on that and let's say it tells me square, and then I'm gonna go in and do the square right away. And then what prompt do I wanna have? So I'm gonna say small dog with crazy colors. And then I'm just gonna go in and return and it's gonna start doing stuff for me. And I'm just gonna go in. And you can see here, it kind of looks like the dog that I had before. And I'm looking at one and I'm looking at another one and I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at that one. And this says all the way down that it is art, but you can see as a photo. Let's see if it looks like a photo, if it's gonna look good. It's probably not gonna look as good because it might be some kind of, yeah, I don't know if it looks like a photo, but then you're gonna see here, you have different kind of theme. I'm gonna make it cartoon and I'm gonna go in and say graphics. And now I'm actually in Express. So now I have this little graphics that I have over here and I can load more. So it can just load some more and more for me and different kind of images that I have. So let's look at this guy that I have here and maybe I wanna go and start working with this one and I wanna create something with it. So I even can go back here and then I can remove the background. I can also go in and download it and then I can download it just as an image. So if I was in Firefly already, I could have brought an image directly from Firefly directly over here and not do all this stuff over here. But now what if I wanted to remove the background? It is going to remove the background. And now I have this little doggy over here. So I'm just gonna go back here and make him a little smaller. And I have a little doggy over here. So can I hold down the option key and then just do another copy? Absolutely, I can, can. I can click on one of the copy and then I can click over here and say, I want this one to be green. And I want this one, I can go back here and I can have it a little different color. I'm making already an Andy Warhol all the way here just without even painting with that. And I can make it bigger and I can make another one and then hold down the option key. And then I can go back here to effect over here and make this one. And I can make this one a little bigger and then hold down the option key and have another one over here. And again, have some kind of effect to that and make one that looks like this. So, and maybe I'm gonna have it duotone like the others. So I'm gonna go back here and then I'm going to the effects. I'm looking for something that I didn't do before. Absolutely great. So I can also change a little bit the, this one is on top. I can go back here and put the hierarchy and put with the layers that I have here. And then I'm gonna to go to a background color. So in the background color, I can choose a different color that I wanna have. And maybe I'm just gonna go in and choose a plain color. Or maybe I wanna use a lighter color or any other color that I wanna go back here and use it. I can start going in and look at this. I kinda of have some kind of effect already, but I started with the object with text to image, 
right? So I could have bought the image directly from here, or I can start working with it uh, just as is. Can I continue over here? Absolutely. I can go back to media and then go and bring my own photos. I can bring a video. I can bring an audio if I want. I can go to my elements and I can bring different backgrounds. I can also bring shapes over here. So if I'm going to go in and bring a shape, and then I'm just going to go back here and put it in here and just going to go in and put the shape over here. And then I can go back here and put the shape all the way down. And I have the shape below the area that I have. And then I can basically go in and do round corners, not round corners to the shape, and even go back here and blend it with the different ways and you can see the other image that I have. If I don't wanna have the shape, I can simply delete the shape and bring. Other stuff that you can go and bring is your stuff. Do you see the word your stuff? What is that? This is my creative cloud libraries that I have. So you can see here, this guy, if I wanna go back here, this is what I had. I can add as an image or I can add it as a page. And then I'm just going to go in and look at that. I added that as an image and I put it in there. And now I'm just going to go back here and then I'm making it in a screen mode. And I made it like a different kind of stuff. Or I can even make it as a completely stuff that I have here. I can make it a little bit bigger. And look what I have over here. I have different kind of shapes and things like this. And that's on top of the guy. Or I can just go back here and put it all the way down. And if I zoom into it, you can see that you have some kind of texture in the background. I can click on that and I can go in and say normal. And that's going to be the regular one. I can leave normal and I can go in and play with opacity. And I have my kind of social media that I can start working with it. I can upload it. I can do anything that I want to go and work with. So you can work with AI and the Firefly together with uh, Adobe Express. Another thing that I want to go back here, you have a lot of templates that you can load. And to the templates, you can go in and add different kind of stuff that you have. So if I wanted to go in and do it as a new project, I can start working over here and then deciding what do I want to have here. On sale now, I don't want that. I don't want this one. I don't want that. But I kind of want it to have as my beginning, right? Like some kind of a uh, little square or something that went there to somewhere. So I can go back here and then I can go to media again. And then I can upload or I can say text to image. And then I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to go in to over here. I want it to be a little small one. And then I'm going to do flowers with yellow dots. So I want to put some flowers over here because that's going to be something that I'm going to maybe use to the area that I have. And then if I'm going to go in here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then all of a sudden, I feel like, I don't know if the other one, maybe I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then move that around. So I have this one. Maybe it's going to be a little add for something. I can go in here and make it as a multiply mode. It's darker. But if you do it into a screen mode, you can see that you have some kind of the flowers there. And on top of that, you can do different things. So you can start bringing in different kind of image within Adobe Express. I'm going to jump for a second before we open it to q and I'm going to go back here again to Firefly. And then I'm just going to go back here to Firefly. And then let's say I'm just going to go back here. And I'm going to go in 
to work with this image. And then I'm gonna go in, look, zoom in to Firefly and let's see if I can see some more stuff. Let's say I'm gonna click on that and then all the way up here in the edit, I'm gonna go in and do more in Adobe Express. And then I can go in and bring it directly to Adobe Express at the, over here and say edit in Adobe Express. So I'm opening it now in Adobe Express. So I did it here. Now I'm in Adobe Express already. So whatever I have over here, it says text to image and everything that you have here. And then it tells me what the person did. A unicorn in a magical grove, extremely detailed. A you um, when we say when we say a red unicorn, and let's say if it is going to generate it, I don't know if it's going to regenerate it for me. It just did it over here. And I don't know if text to image and I want to go in all the way down and I actually have to regenerate what I read. So I'm going to regenerate it right now. And let's see if I'm going to get something a little bit different. And this is how I did the doggy that I showed you. I started in Firefly and then I went over here and then I start kind of playing it. So now I'm going to go back here and then do I want the result? Yes, not. Do I want it? It's fantasy. Or maybe I want to go back here and say effects. And then I'm going to say misty and neon and generate. So I can go back and forth and change the stuff that I have. I can download it, take it to Photoshop and start working with it. So they're all kind of working together. The thing is in Photoshop, you need to know a little bit of Photoshop to understand that. Does that make sense? Any questions you guys have? Any ideas? I know we had one person to ask a lot of questions and he actually left us because he needed to go to another class. But if do you guys have any other questions? In the premiere? I don't think so, not yet. I think not yet, not yet, right now it's Illustrator and Photoshop and Firefly and Express. I think soon it's gonna be in all of them. It's slowly getting everywhere that you have. And some things I'm telling you, let's say you're gonna ask another question. And while I'm saying yes or no, they're probably changing it at the moment while I'm talking. So it is changing so fast. This is something that I cannot say, well, I've been using it for our, for years and I can tell you this is how it is. I'm like sometime we'll work with something and then read something later and say, wow, they have a new feature. Oh, they're moving it. And then I'm going to tell you after October 12, you'll see a lot of changes because we do have Adobe Max and then they're coming out with all the new stuff that we have. So... Any other questions? Do you think you're gonna use that for anything that you have? See, I can share, I can download, and I can just opening in Photoshop right now. So once once I'm just gonna go, I can, I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and I'm gonna go back here. I wonder if I can open it actually in Illustrator and then tell Illustrator to do something else with it. So I'm gonna go back to my download and I'm opening it here. So it is kind of like a big file. And then I'm just gonna make it a lot smaller purposely. And look at where I am. I'm in Illustrator and it is a pixel base. And Illustrator is basically a vector base. But let's see what I can do. I can go to image trace. So if I'm gonna to go to image trace, that's vector already. And then maybe I'm gonna go and make it with different kind of colors, but I'm going to go back here and maybe I'm gonna make it high fidelity colors. So what did I do right now? It is thinking for me. 
And guess what this one is? Now it's basically a vector-based image. I mean, it is going to make it bigger in a minute and take small, but it's not pixel anymore. So you can go and change colors in the different ways. So if I'm zooming into it, it's still, you can see it is vector. And now you're going to say, what if I wanted to change the colors right now? So at the moment, what I'm doing, I'm expanding it. It's dangerous what I'm doing, but I'm doing it, right? Why? Because sometimes if it's a big file, it's going to do But I want to show you how I take one thing and put it in another way. This is how it's reading. Guess what we have here? Recolor. If I'm going to go to Recolor Artwork, hopefully it is going to open because it's too many colors. I should have done it with less colors. I'm probably going to crash in a minute. But look what I, oops, I had here to recolor artwork and it went away for me for a minute. I should have done it with a lot less colors, which I got greedy. And that's why it takes such a long time. So now when I go into recolor artwork, it's not going to stay there, I think, because it's way I'm going to go back here and look if I can do it. Let me just go and make it a little smaller. So I'm just going to go back here and just do that. So it's not going to be too much. You see how I can do it? This is all vector. So it's all basically, it's not a pixel based image anymore. So I'm just gonna go back here. And then if I wanna go in and work with, let me see if it's gonna work with that. Cause maybe it's a little bit, well, for some reason it doesn't want to stay because I think it's way too many color. But you understand the idea, right? I can go back and forth. And if I'm going to go in and place the other image again, and then go back here, I'm going to go into image trace and I'm really going to make it less colors. I made it too many colors. I'm going to make it this. So you see, it's going to be a lot faster. And that's, I'm going to expand it. See, now it's easy, right? Now I'm going to go back here and now it's staying. So I'm going to go back to the advanced option and I'm going to go to generative fill. And now I'm going to say terracotta something. And then the whole image that used to be an Adobe, it used to be actually a Firefly image. Now I'm going to go back here and look at the variation they're giving me over here. And it's all vector based. Is that cool or what? So you can see that you can take it to do different ways of working. Any other questions? Are you guys okay with everything? Are you excited about Adobe Firefly? Like me. Mm -hmm. So this is a, maybe a little bit better. So you see, and you can start playing with it and then see how you want to work with it. Great. We're going to post it on the portal so you can watch it again. And thank you very much for coming and ask as many questions as you want. We do have another class here at four. You are invited to come to our other classes. We are in the middle now, but it's the certification classes which is 10 weeks at a time. And now we started the fall and then in the winter, we're gonna have uh, summer, no fall, spring, we're gonna have another class. So thank you very much. And then I will post it. Great.